slowly backs edge of it. As a skater, this trick feels really simple, but as a nerd, corrections. From an academic point of view, this trick is packed of questions. Like, why are gnarly or fakey shovets easier than normal shovets? And why does the board leave the ground? Yes, it's just a matter of an inch or two, but isn't that weird, considering the nose doesn't hit the ground? This time, we will talk about no leave backside shovets and the science behind it, which is also leading to uncovering the secret behind the phantom tricks in skateboarding. You're watching Why the Trick, and today we are going to study a trick scientifically. Once you get the feeling of getting back on your board, not only is this trick the easiest, but it also becomes a trick that consumes the least amount of energy. Although you could pop if you want to, but you don't have to to complete the 180 degrees rotation. Instead, all you need is just a little bit of nudge on the nose. Then you get yourself a nolly shove it, which some people may call the phantom shove it. Or perhaps that term should only be used when you don't pop the tail when you're supposed to, like when you do this kind of tray flip. Anyway, just for the sake of science, let's call this shove it a phantom shove it in this video. Just so you know, phantom tricks are referred to when you don't pop the tail or a nose over a board. Or even if you do, the amount of vertical force exerted is so small that either the tail or nose doesn't hit the ground. In this case, since I pushed down the nose, he actually goes down. But he stops doing so before he reaches the ground. Nonetheless, somehow, the entire board lifts up for some reason. Generally, we think we have to pop to bring our boards up into the air. But it seems like some sort of entirely different mechanics is working here. A sort of mechanics that brings the board up into the air without even requiring the bounce of the board. Now isn't that science? To understand this, let's try this simulation. Here, we have a rocket and a box, and they are connected by this chain. When the rocket goes up, it brings the box with it. And just like you can see, the box goes up without doing anything. It doesn't generate any energy, it simply is dragged by the rocket. Now how about this? If you try the same experiment with these pieces of boards, it's the same result. The rear truck goes up without doing anything. Going back to the real world, the concept is the same. A moving object brings other parts with it. Although a skateboard deck is a solid material, and the simulation we just saw might not precisely apply to it, but the same physics works here too. In no leap backside shavits, as I push down the nose, the tail rises up. And it has potential energy to lift the entire board up, without having to have the nose hit the ground. At this point, you may be thinking, if that's the case, why does my board not go up when I push on the tail while I'm standing still? Well, you're absolutely correct. The vertical momentum of the tail that is generated by pushing down the nose, that alone is generally not strong enough to lift the entire board up into the air. So, although pushing down one side of the board may give the board energy to go up, it's not strong enough. And there needs to be something else in addition to this. In fact, the truth behind this can be answered by thinking about this question. Why are shovits easier in gnarly or fakey? In my gnarly shovits, when I push down the nose, the tail of my board swings out from a direction in which my board is going to. And it doesn't happen just because I push the nose to the toe side. In fact, there is something a lot more interesting happening here. If you take a closer look at my front wheels, it's not like they instantly leave the ground right after popping. Instead, you can see them kind of stick to the ground even after the tail starts to swing out. So they stay in contact with the ground for the shortest duration of time. But they don't just stay there still they actually divert their directions sideways while staying on the ground. 
However, the rest of the board still has energy to go straight forward. With the front wheel sticking to the ground and blocking its movement, the only direction the rest of the board can disperse its potential energy to is along with the circumference of the pivot point. Yes, we are talking about the law of inertia. If you harness this concept, you don't even have to try to spin your board 180 degrees, because the physics does that anyways. Let me put it this way, imagine there is a car going straight forward, and a pole in front of it. The pole is not exactly in the center of its way, and is slightly off to the side. As we can instinctively tell what happens, when the car hits the pole, it spins sideways. In addition to the horizontal spin, we also have to take into account that the car's rear part flips up. Upon impact, the car's front part stops, but the center of gravity of this object still has energy to go straight forward, which needs to go somewhere. In other words, according to the law of inertia, it tries to maintain the direction of its original movement, while it simply can't with the pole blocking its way. So, the force needs to find a way to move forward using the pivot point as a fulcrum, which further elevates the center of gravity of this object. In summary, there are two types of upward momentum. The first one is the one that's generated by pushing down the nose. The second one is the one that's generated by the law of inertia. And when they are combined, they sum up and form enough energy to lift the entire board up. Plus, if you go back to one of the first questions, the reason why some tricks are easier in Nolly or Fakey is because of the law of inertia. In other words, in a normal shabit, a contact point between the board and the ground is on the rear side relative to the center of gravity of the skateboard, with which we can't utilize the law of inertia because the contact point doesn't either stop the movement of the board or function as a pivot point. So this time, we talked about the basic concept of phantom tricks. Of course, if you wish to gain more height, you should pop harder and actually hit the ground. Anyway, hopefully I could show you the bounce of the board is not needed in phantom tricks. And that's all for this episode. Let's talk about how to land and practice this trick next time. Please go visit my website and check out my 3D models from a link in description. Thank you for watching, until next time.